In this short video, we're going to discuss our first named theorem that has its own abbreviation, the Intermediate Value Theorem, also known as the IVT. Now in math, you know if a theorem has not only a name, but also an abbreviation, it is really important. So what's the basic idea? Before we even state the intermediate value theorem, let's get a picture in our mind. The idea is that if you have a continuous function, so there's no jumps, there's no holes, no breaks, no asymptotes, no vertical asymptotes at least, and I am going to go from a point on the curve where my y coordinate is f of a, I go down to another point on the curve my y coordinate is f of b, and if there's any value n between f of a and f of b, then somewhere I'm going to have to pass through a point on the curve whose y coordinate is n, and more importantly, the x coordinate is going to be between a and b. Now here is the statement. Suppose that f of x is continuous on a closed interval a comma b and let n be any number between f of a and f of b where f of a is not equal to f of b. Then there exists a number c in the open interval a comma b such that f of c equals n. So notice that there are three key ingredients or three key conditions that we need to be able to use the IVT. First, we need a continuous function. Second, we need that function to be continuous on a closed interval, a comma b. And third, we need to have an intermediate value, n, a value of n which is between f of a and f of b. Now notice that the intermediate value theorem is what we call an existence theorem. It tells us that there is a number c where f of c equals n, but it doesn't tell us what that number is. And in fact, it doesn't even tell us if there could be more than one. So here's an example where my function looks somewhat like a sine curve. It has many oscillations here. And uh, between f of a and f of b, I've selected a number n, and there are actually three different values of c where f of c equals n. There are many different applications of IVT, but probably the most useful is to get us at least started in finding the solution to an equation or the zero of a function. Notice that really those two problems are equivalent. If I wanted to find a solution to tangent of x equals two of x, I'd probably start by saying, well, where does this solution exist? And that's what the IVT will help us with. So I would take my equation because the intermediate value theorem says nothing about equations. I would make that equation equal to zero. And that would be then equivalent to saying that that function tangent of x minus 2x has at least one zero. In this case, the statement says positive 
zero, since it's obvious that tangent of zero is a solution to the equation. So we'd like to show that there's another solution. So what's our strategy? We'd like to find a value of a where uh, f of a is not equal to zero. And then using trial and error, we try to find a value b where f of b has the opposite sign of f of a. And then given that those numbers a and b, I can use the intermediate value theorem with my function f of x, the closed interval a comma b, and my intermediate value would be n equals zero. Let's look at a couple of examples. The first one says, show that there is a positive number whose cube root is half the number. So we're not trying to find the number. We're not trying to solve an equation. We're just trying to use the intermediate value theorem to show that such a number exists. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to use x to represent my number. What do I want? The cube root of x should equal half of x. And x should be positive. So I'm going to make one side equal to 0. So now I have cube root of x minus 1 half x equals 0. So that tells me my function f of x is going to be cube root of x minus 1 half x. Now note f is continuous. You do not have to prove that f is continuous, you, but you should state that it is continuous. And you should know that indeed it is continuous because it is the difference between a polynomial and a root function. Now we have to do a little trial and error. We have to be able to find a and b where the f of a and the f of b have opposite signs, one being positive, one being negative. So I just chose some numbers that I know the cube root of. So for example, 1 eighth, and I calculated f of 1 eighth, found that that is 7 over 16. Then I went to another number bigger, like f of 1. I found f of 1 is still positive, so that doesn't help me. I still have the same sign. So let me go to another big number that I know, the cube root of. So uh, f of 8 then is negative 2. So now I can use a equals 1 and b equals 8 because the sign of f of 1 is positive, but the sign of f of 8 is negative. Now I've got my trial and error. I have to actually write out my conclusion. So I'm going to start by defining what my function is. Let f of x equal the cube root of x minus 1 half x. Note f is continuous on 1 comma 8 with f of 1 equals a half and f of 8 equals negative 2. Since 0 is between f of 1 and f of 8, then by the IVT, there is a number c between 1 and 8 such that f of c equals 0. In other words, the cube root of c minus half of c equals 0, or the cube root of c equals 1 half c. So in this conclusion, I have to have those three key ingredients. I have to note that I have a continuous function. Of course, I have to define what that function is. So 
So that's what I started off with. F of x equals cube root of x minus one half x. I have to note what is my closed interval. So I said f is continuous on the closed interval one comma eight. Then I told what the function values were at the endpoints and noted that I have an intermediate value. I said zero is between f of one and f of eight. I stated that I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem. So that phrase by the IVT should be in your conclusion. There is a number C between one and eight such that f of c equals zero. And finally, if your original question was asking something specific, go ahead and answer the original question. So in other words, there is a number c where the cube root of c equals one half c. Let's look at another example. Show that the cosine function has a fixed point. That is, there is a number t such that the cosine of t equals t. All right, again, I'm, I'm given an equation here. Cosine of t equals t. So my first step is to rewrite that as with one side equal zero. So cosine of t minus t equals zero. So my function f, I have to define my function f. Let f of t equal cosine of t minus t. Note that f is continuous. Again, you do not have to prove f is continuous, but you must state it. So now we go into our trial and error. We're trying to find our a and b, where f of a and f of b have opposite signs. So uh, f of zero, I'm just trying things that are simple from the unit circle. f of zero is going to be one. f at pi over two is going to be negative pi over two. So now I have my values for a and b. So let's review what the conclusion will say. I have to define my function. Let f of t equal cosine of t minus t. I have to note that it's continuous on a closed interval. So note that f is continuous on zero comma pi over two. And what are the function values at the endpoints? And f of zero equals one, while f of pi over two equals negative pi over two. Next, I have to note that I have an intermediate value since zero is between f of zero and f of pi over two. I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem. Then, by the IVT, there is a number c between zero and pi over two such that f of c equals zero. Now answer the question, the original question, that is cosine of c minus c equals zero, or cosine of c equals c. So I want to emphasize that you must write this conclusion with complete sentences using correct English. You must state that you have a continuous function on a closed interval. You have to note that you have a value between f of a and f of b, and that you are using the intermediate value theorem to show that there's a number between the endpoints where f of c equals your intermediate value. Well, I hope this video has helped explain the intermediate value theorem, and I hope you find it valuable.